and we're going to make a calzone. So let me show you how that goes. In this pan, I have more olive oil, and I want to flavor it with some fresh thyme. So these are just a few sprigs of fresh thyme. Left them whole. Put them right here in the olive oil. And you just want to press on that. Press on it in the oil just to flavor that oil because you're going to take those sprigs out. So I'm going to let that go for a few minutes. So once you've flavored the oil with your thyme, you can take the thyme out. You'll know it's ready to come out because you'll be able to smell how fragrant the olive oil smells with the thyme. So I'm going to carefully take that out, put it on a dish, and add some hot red pepper flakes right in there because I like pepper flakes. And now that's going to flavor the oil. So you get that going. Don't let that burn, though, because those pepper flakes very easily could burn. Turn the heat down. And we simply take this, and now we're going to put it in the oil. So dry, take all the escarole, put it in the pan. I want to give that a little bit of salt and pepper. Move it around. Let me turn this down now. Move this around. And just let that wilt down. That's going to take just a few minutes. I'm going to put a cover over it now. And now we can go on to making the filling for the calzone. So that's the escarole while it's being cooked. This is what it looks like after it's cooked. So we're now going to add that to some fresh ricotta cheese right here. So we add our filling, or I add our escarole to the uh, ricotta. We're going to add some fontina cheese. So we have grated fontina, and we have some grated parmigiano. Parmigiano reggiano is considered the king of all Italian cheeses, a cow's milk cheese coming from the region of Emilia Romagna. So now we mix this all together. I'm going to give this a little bit of salt. And that's all there is to the filling. And when you do the escarole, when you take it out of the pan after it's been cooked down, you want to make sure that you squeeze the excess water out of it because you don't want this to be wet in your filling, in your uh, puff pastry, rather. So that's all well and good and ready to go. So we're going to set that aside now. And we're going to uh, do our little rollout. Okay. So for this, you're using commercially prepared puff pastry that you can buy in the grocery store. You want it to, to keep it cold until you're ready to use it. And it comes in a sheet like this, usually two to a package. And now we're going to put just a little flour down on our board here and give this a quick roll because this will make four. This will make four wonderful looking calzones. So I give it a quick roll and then I just take a little knife and I cut four pieces. Just like that. Now, we take our filling and you want to put, oh, a nice generous amount in the center. Don't put so much in that it's all going to spill out the other end, but about oh, a quarter of a cup, a generous quarter of a cup, I would say, in the center of each one. Now, right, that looks good. So once you have that, then what you want to do is wet the edges so that the pastry all sticks together. So you go around the outside of each one of these. And this is where you can do your little trim if you're so inclined. And you take and you fold that over, pressing the edges. We take a fork and go around and crimp those edges. 
You do this to keep it all together really sealed because you don't want that filling to fall out. And when you're doing, when you're working with puff pastry like this, you want your oven on preheated to a high temperature, so 425 degrees. They look beautiful. Then you get out a bake sheet with a piece of parchment on it and you place your calzone, spacing them nicely, on the sheet, just like that. And because these are going to cook at a high temperature, you want to add just a little cut right there to allow steam to escape. 425 preheated.